Hey friends. <clears throat> well, I had a um, kind of an interesting morning and an old familiar feeling came back. What I mean is that I had a conversation recently and it brought back a context, a, um, an area of life, my life, in which I have grown accustomed to being angry and indignant. And so, and, and I've spoken, it's been a little while since I spoke about uh, this particular issue on, on the post, but, but, you know, indignation is one of my favorite addictions. And I've done a pretty good job recently of really not indulging it, really not going there. And I had this, I've had this moment, you know, in the, which I have spoken about recently, where I was listening to Joe Dispenza's, uh, he was talking about manifesting from the quantum field, which he describes as a process of connecting with the emotion, the emotional state that you will feel upon receiving a desire upon creating a set of circumstances that you that you desire. Um, it's basically a kind of um, manifestation tool that leapfrogs the illusion of having to travel through time and space to get something we want. And I spoke over the last couple of days about some of the things that came up in me as I started to work with this. And I noticed oddly and a certain amount of resistance initially, and I had to kind of work out what that was about. You know, why would anybody want to resist the notion that they could manifest whatever they want instantaneously? Feels like a weird thing to resist, right? Well, check out my last couple of posts to sort of, if you want to, if you're interested in um, some of my thoughts around that. But but what happened today was I was I was actually really leaning into that sense. I I thought to myself and I could I could really feel, oh yeah, I can I actually can do this. I can resonate with the emotions and with the frequency of a fully manifested desire. That's kind of cool. And then almost like a like a test or a uh, kind of a galvanizing challenge enter this other area this other um aspect of my life where i've consistently felt frustrated and angry and, and in, indignant you know righteous indignation if you've seen my post from a couple months ago it's one of the, my favorite places to go and and what I noticed today was, you know, it, again, it's been, I've, I've been not experiencing it for quite some time. And I've felt the kind, the effect of that indignation on my system gradually dissipating, gradually like detoxing from it. And 
and and of course what happens when we detox from a from a poisonous emotion or a poisonous complex of emotions is other capacities start to come online we start to become available in a, in a in a way that feels like synchronicity it can feel almost magical or you know out of the blue but it's not really out of the blue it's actually we've we if we could really kind of see the full contours of our psychic space it would make perfect sense it would be like a round peg in a round hole situation that we make space for something new to come in and then that new thing comes in so what was really notable today was that after all this time and really having gained a sense of a measure of freedom from this particular addictive emotion, how quickly I could snap back into that addiction. And it made me think about, you know, like, like a, like recovering from substance abuse. I feel like I'm an indignaholic. This is like indigna, indignaholics anonymous <laughs> because I, or emotion, you know, maybe that, maybe there's something around emotion that the, our addiction to emotions is really similar to, to a substance addiction in that there's a set of chemical and psychological changes that happen as a huge complex, a huge cascade, you know, you pull one trigger and a whole slew of things goes into motion. And, and it was remarkable just again, having kind of felt like this hasn't been active in me for a long time, how quickly that same old response came back, that same old hook. And so, it made me appreciate the work I've been doing and, and kind of the, um, the rigor with which I've been remaining free of those things. But it also made me appreciate how important it is to really be vigilant. And so I was literally standing here doing my yoga practice, feeling between the, the sense of okay, I can step into the infinite power of manifestation, my own capacity to create anything I want instantly and, 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 and resonating with that. I feel like I've come through some of my resistance to that and now I'm able to kind of remain there. And then diving into a, a furious internal tirade about this circumstance and this this situation and blah, blah. and it's just like going right back down the the indignation emotional emotional drug rabbit hole and and it it really made me appreciate you know like if you think about the 12 step program of total total abstinence from the addictive substance it kind of the only way you know and I I, I I I was not berating myself for going there I was more fascinated by the fact that I could that I that that, that hook came back so strong it just gave me a it gave me a, a glimpse of the and it was almost like I, as I watched that emotion kind of take over and start to run its course and I and my mind started rehearsing the same old fiery fire and brimstone speeches internally of course which will undoubtedly never be expressed externally. Um, what that did to my state and what that did to my access 
to the emotional state of, of, of total already, always already fulfilled abundance and inviting desire, inviting the satisfaction of desires simply by resonating with the already satisfied nature of myself. That state, it was interesting because it's probably maybe one of the, maybe, maybe one of the most clear examples I've ever had of stepping from the felt sense of one state into the felt sense of the other state and kind of going, whoa, this feels really different than this. <clears throat> Possibility just goes away. Everything, and I, I have a, my, my, my motive over here is to win, to defeat, to prove that I'm right, it's not to satisfy my desires. That's ostensibly going on underneath, but really the agenda is not to satisfy my desires. The agenda is to be angry and indignant about not having my desires satisfied. That, see that distinction? It's a really big, big, big distinction. I'm ranting and raving over here in this state about, about how unjust it is that my desires won't be satisfied. But if I look closely, my agenda is not to satisfy the desires. It's actually to have the rant about not having my desires felt or, or satisfied. So that's so. So it's a, it's almost like a polar opposite from the state in which I simply already accept the satisfaction, the the emotional abundance, the freedom the sort of fifth dimensional capacity for total satisfaction. You can't have both. You literally can't have both. There, it's two complete, it's like two different universes. It's like living in two different cities or living on two different planets or living on the same planet, but in two completely different dimensions. You know, like those crazy like hologram looking designs where there were Scientists postulate that maybe there are entire other dimensions happening on this same planet and there are beings with buildings and cities and stuff on the same planet, but they're in a dimension that we can't see. So we just like everything just kind of like our dimension just like interpenetrates with theirs. They don't know we're here. They, we don't know they're here. It's like that. It's totally different realities. Um, and... And they have totally different agendas. You know, the agenda of this reality, the angry one, is to destroy the possibility of satisfying desires. Because if that capacity is, is, is awakened, is alive, then I don't get to rant. Well, that's the worst thing ever. I, I want to rant more than anything in the world from this place. So, kind of a, kind of a, kind of a... <laughs> Kind of a roller coaster this morning, but really interesting to observe the state change and 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 you know ultimately of course um, I was I was able to let this I I would say I had more objectivity and more capacity to keep at arm's length that addictive um, that addictive substance of emotional indignation. Uh, because I was really able to, I, you know, I was very clearly like, I know I want to, I'm over here now. I, wanna, I live here. I'm feeling this capacity open, awaken. But there was like a reminder, like, this is what this will do to you. This is what this does to you. This is how quickly you can collapse all of this if you're not conscious of it. So big stuff, good stuff, big stuff kind of cool to have gotten that glimpse um but also pretty humbling and sobering as far as recognizing i'm not actually free of this emotional addiction i i can i can stop indulging it but i'm not i'm, I'm still an addict it's like an ad, i'm just an addict who's not doing the substance that may be the way I always am with regard to some of these emotions. So, and, and, and so it's, it's be good to be able to identify those emotions in ourselves and be able to say, I'm an addict to this. Whether or not I've done the drug in five years or 10 years or 
30 years, I'm always going to be an addict to this particular emotional hook. And it's bad for me. And I need to stay away from it. <laughs> so, this is interesting. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate you. Have a lovely, lovely day. I will see you tomorrow.